I'm Kirk Neville. And I'm Corey Sander. And Shade, this is our project. Also known as Sound and Water. Wow, 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 wow. When talking about sound in air versus water, it might not be easy to see right away why sound in fact moves faster in water than it does in air. To make it simple, let's make the assumption that the sound moves linearly, which of course is not true. Imagine the sound moving like a game of hopscotch. Now when you move along this path, the general direction is one long line. This will be very similar to how close together particles and solids are, but for the sake of this comparison, we'll say it's water. Now imagine if we made this game of hopscotch more difficult. Now you're stretching yourself a little bit more than you'd like to, so you might want to take the path to the right or to your left. Let's take the right. The distance between each particle is greater, so you can see how much faster you'd have to move to get to your destination in the same time as in the water. This is what it's like in air. Except it's not linear. Sound propagates in a ripple and gets weaker as it moves further away from the source. But it's the same idea. In class, we learned about the Mach number velocity of an object moving through a fluid divided by the speed of the sound in that particular fluid. Let's say you have two vessels, one in air, one in water, both fluids at 20 degrees Celsius, and you want both to move at Mach 1. As you can see, mainly because of a greater density, you would have to move more than four times as fast in water as in air to reach Mach 1. Another way to think about it is runners versus swimmers. Because of density differences, it's more difficult to move in water than air. As seen by the table in the back of the book on page 716. You can see as temperature increases, so does the speed of sound. But wait, density decreases. This is due to the individual air particles having extra kinetic energy at higher temperatures, allowing vibrations of sound waves to pass easily. Also by comparison to an ideal gas, we can see that with the temperature in the numerator, it shows that as temperature increases, the speed of sound increases. Now the concept of sound in water and its applications is nothing new. The study of ambient noise dates all the way back to World War II. In World War II, acoustic mines were developed that were triggered by the sound of ships. Using specific ambient noise levels associated with the ships, you could set a mine to go off when the ship was near. Nowadays, using modern digital signal processing, mines can be programmed to pick specific acoustic signatures. The combat mines along with a range of other applications, another application of sound and water was used known as sonar. Sonar, originally an acronym for sound navigation and ranging, is a technique that uses sound propagation to navigate, communicate with, or detect other vessels. The two types of sonar are passive and active. Passive sonar listens to sounds made by objects in the water. Active sonar delivers pulses of sounds and listens to the echoes to determine how far away they are. Because of its versatility, sonar can be used in many applications such as the following. Fishing, echo sounding for depth and distance to object measurement, ship velocity measurement, ROVs, UUVs, vehicle location, torpedoes, mines, mine countermeasures, submarine navigation, sonya buoys, which are buoys with sonar capabilities, underwater communications, ocean surveillance, underwater security, handheld sonar, intercepting other sonar. The only thing you can't use sonar for is to give us first place on this project, though we are working on it. Just want to thank you for listening to our project, our project.